So thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate you taking time. We'll record this presentation. So if you want to go back and reference it later, um, we will make that available through our website and or YouTube channel or both. Uh, in the room with me as I have, have Lisa. Lisa is helping, my, helping me moderate this presentation. She is also our equipment specialist. So if there is questions as we get towards the tail end of the presentation that revolve around the equipment, because it is an important part of, uh, of mobility, obviously, the devices that you're going to use, please feel free to submit those questions. In the room, I also have Mr. John Newman. He is the president and owner of BCC Distribution and our uh, inventory control warehousing expert and has a lot of experience with it, with the long life of mobility with SAP. So I'm going to have him step in in just a moment to provide an a quick overview, uh, real brief, about 30 seconds to a minute, on BCT distribution, uh, our key solution that addresses these types of mobility, and then I'll take it from there. One goal that I want everybody to keep in mind that's participating today is we are taking a consultative approach to this webinar today. We're trying to relay facts, positive and negative, on all the different aspects. This is not going to be a deep dive technical review. We don't have technical experts that are talking in depth about architecture, backgrounds, gateways, etc. We're going to touch on it high level and if there's questions that you have that are applicable to your specific application, then we want to talk with you specifically to better understand exactly what your requirements are so we can tailor that message because each of these topics we're talking about can go one to two hours by themselves. So we're really condensing it down to be high level to touch on key questions that we get on a daily basis. So here's a, here's a quick look at of our, of our agenda, what to expect. Quick introduction, a comparison of some of the best practice uh, mobile architectures as recommended by SAP and specific to inventory control. Uh, we're going to look at the benefits, what's good, what's bad, the concerns and considerations for each technology and how it's applicable to the software, the connectivity, as well as the devices themselves. And again, we're going to deep dive, or not deep dive, rather, we're going to touch on the technology considerations for these different platforms. We're going to talk about software, we're going to talk about connectivity, we're going to talk about the equipment, everything that's important to mobility. So with that said, I want to turn it over to John for just a couple of minutes to walk through a little bit about our company. Uh, I know most of those on the line have familiarity with our organization because we invited you, but just to reiterate a couple of points to keep it fresh. John? Well, thanks for the upgrade. You started off with giving me 30 seconds to a minute, and now it's a couple of minutes. <laughs> and anyone that knows me thinks uh, that two minutes is probably going to turn into four. But let's see how quickly we can uh, move forward. The, uh, the attendees that we have here, most, most of all of them know who BCC is. So I'm going to go real, real quick. But the bottom line um, is we're out, out, of, uh, out here in the uh, suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. We have been specific to barcode data collections for over 25 years, and we've been a certified SAP partner, a certified Zebra partner, a certified bartender partner for over 15 years um, with those products. We've also been a certified partner with a product called Neptune, and you're going to learn more about that as Nick does the presentation. But at the end of the day, uh, we have been doing these systems for over 25 years, which really gives us the latitude and the luxury to do a presentation like this, which allows everyone to understand when is the right time to do a specific technology, real-time, batch, offline, online, et cetera. Great. And what really gives us that, that latitude to be able to uh, present and be the experts, again, is our deliverables. So as everyone knows with BCC, and if you don't, you'll learn it right now, uh, we have the ability to, as our customers like to say, deliver a one throat to choke methodology of delivery of systems. From the equipment to all the different components of software, um, which is our SAP software transactions and components, uh, the barcode printing, bartender integrated pieces, as well with SODI, which is a mobile management software piece, and, and the actual browsers and terminal emulation pieces of software that actually re reside on the tablets and the mobile terminals. And we have, and we offer all the services and support that go along with that. So we have the programmers, 
and the trainers and the documentation people and all of the support that needs to be done when delivering equipment and software that integrates into SAP. So real quick, I want to um, really kind of leverage um, what we've done, which will we'll get Nick to discuss what we really want to talk today, which is specific examples of when you use different types of connectivity uh, between SAP. Um, over the last 25 years, most of our customers ask us the same questions. Um, I want an integrated real-time system, but I've got to have a backup plan. I have to have redundancy. Uh, I'm putting together a disaster, disaster recovery plan, as well as what happens when I don't have wireless coverage, SAP coverage, I'm on a campus. And, and I, I'm taking a little bit of uh, the glory away from Nick, but I really kind of want, just want to set you up and give you an idea why we really are experts here. It's because we've had the ability to deliver software over the 25 years to cover all of these pieces. So way back in the day, we started our SAP integrated mobile software with a Telnet product called Console, which a lot of comp companies still use today, and we still deliver today. And we migrated that to ITS Mobile, which is a more accepted web browser client. And now we're getting into Fiori, and we're getting into Neptune, and we're getting into products that allow us the capability of doing more things. But is more better? Nick will answer that question shortly. And, and these are just a, a couple of the pictures to show you that uh, as the software, as our migration of the software changed, so did the screen look and feel, so did the terminals. We went from a Windows Mobile CE device to an Android device to even a Windows 10 device. Um, and as, as we move on farther and farther down the road, it's right now becoming more Android. And the more that it is Android, um, the more we can put layers and layers and layers on scanning terminals so that we can do offline and online. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Nick's going to let us know very, very shortly, though. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so thank you, John. Anything you'd like to add before I jump in and start talking about this? So, yeah, again, if you have questions as we go along, that was our, our, our brief introduction. Now we're going to get into some of the, uh, some of the differences and variations, variations and options, uh, and also, one of the things that, uh, that I want to emphasize, everybody seems to, to have SAP or is involved with SAP at some level. So there's a lot of variations on terminology that's used. So I'm going to do a uh, attempt to do a good job on actually deciphering and defining what the specific terms are as we go. But I want to start with a high level of a couple of important options about what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about more than what you see on the screen right now. This is just a kind of a high level where we're going to try to stay focused, even though we're going to go off track and talk about other solutions. There's a lot of solutions out there, SAP inventory manager, application, authentication applications, uh, third-party tools, uh, software as a service tools, middleware products, et cetera. We're going to try to stay focused, and we're going to try to stay focused on SAP best practices, which to us means native. Uh, so in this case, we've got three categories that we're going to stay uh, focused on. Again, a little deviation coming up. But the first is real time, which is direct connect. And I'm going to get again into the definitions of these terms. But in that scenario or in that box of direct connect real time, which is primarily going to be a stateful online session holding duration type application, we've got ITS Mobile, we've got Console, we've got Neptune Software, which is our UI5 application. And then we've got SAP Fiori. All of these are nept, I'm sorry, native approaches to SAP. They're all add-ons. They're all on the SAP box. So we have a device. We directly connect to SAP, and we validate information in real time. And as you see in this box at the bottom, validation is really the key to everything that we're going to talk about. Um, when you talk about ROI and the business case value for the products, you need to justify the cost to the benefit, the value you're getting. I want to reduce or eliminate errors. I want to save time. I want to reduce 
uh, people walking back and forth to offices and pen and paper, et cetera. But also, I want to minimize the investment and the cost and the complexity and the maintenance and the ongoing support. So real time is that starting point. We've got native connectivity. We've got speed of implementation, speed of the functionality. We've got ease of use, intuitive user experience is a very common term for that. We've got the cost, the cost to maintain, the cost to implement, the maintenance, same aspects, uh, something that's proven, tried and true. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of businesses don't want to be on the bleeding edge. They'll be on the cutting edge, but they don't want to be on the bleeding edge of a technology because they want to wait until it's more established and proven and built. So that's an important aspect. And then is it available or does it need to be custom built? Again, it ties back to the speed for implementation, but something that's tried and true, built and ready to go means there's less cost because the solution's in place, but there's less cost for implementation, less cost to bring up the speed, and less cost actually as far as time, timeline, start to finish to implement the system. So that's our baseline, real time. And then we got off online, offline. This is very sophisticated. We've done this a couple times in the last year or 18 months, and we're utilizing the Neptune software package as a tool set and our practice, which I'm going to get into very specifically very soon, to implement this online and offline. This is a primarily online, just like in that first box on the left, it is a real-time system. It's directly connected, real-time, but it has an added layer of support for offline capability. And when I say offline capability and dedicated to it, I mean it's limited offline capability. I know that I'm going to walk, as John said, on a campus from one building to the next, and I need session persistence or holding it is just not enough. I'm going to lose connectivity, and I need database backup resident on my device to be able to cache that data so I can seamlessly go and transition back and forth between online and offline and back again. So that is a different layer. And as you see at the bottom, it's more costly because there's more functionality, more design, more customization. There's an extended time to implement. We need more training, more testing, more development. There's additional customizations. There's more layering, which adds some complexity. And also, I did not want to exclude Fiori. Um, it's, it's, we have it recently announced on the, on the presentation here, but Fiori does have offline capability. And I'm going to talk more about that specifically. But there are some advantages and disadvantages of using different platforms to accomplish online and offline. We call it store and forward because we're storing data on the device simultaneously while doing real-time activity. It's not a gimmick. It's something that's very specific based upon functionality. But that's what that middle category is. And then lastly, we've got Batch. A lot of people know what Batch is. Batch has been around for a long, long time. But I'm looking at it, and we're looking at it today from an offline perspective. It's still direct connect. And I'm going to talk about what that means, even though it's offline. And again, Neptune is the solution that works in all three of these categories, so that's why you see it highlighted here. And then you've got custom programming, things like .NET applications. But you can see, as you move forward or right in the columns, what we're getting away from more and more is the validation, instant validation, immediate validation, real time. The more you disconnect from the system, the more opportunity there is for error and misinformation. Uh, I think we've got it so that is it, uh, garbage in, garbage out is an expression that's used sometimes within SAP. We want to try our very, very best to eliminate that. As John mentioned a minute ago, um, one of the aspects of a system is, is failover, redundancy, a backup system. That is not what we mean by an offline system, and I just want to make that clear. Uh, again, I'm trying to take the complete negative, positive, and consultative approach here. Offline is designed to be a redundant, to give you some type of, um, I'm sorry, it's not designed to be a backup system if your whole system goes down. It's designed to work in an environment where you lose wireless connectivity, or you're going to a site that doesn't have wireless, or your SAP system goes down, but it's for a limited time frame, not a hacker ransomware type situation. That's not what this means. In those scenarios, the proper or more applicable backup scenarios for inventory control transactions and mobility is going to be redundant or participate, uh, partitioned APs, like an isolated VLAN, uh, virtual local area network, 
you got Bluetooth or tethered scanners to PCs, which is, again, just basically a keyboard wedge type environment. You can revert back to paper processes or not our offline direct connect batch, but more of a traditional standalone batch system. These are just a couple of uh, expressions of, of what we could do for failover redundancy, but that's not what we're talking about with offline. So I've said a whole bunch of terms, I think. I've mentioned a couple of these already. So let's talk about some of the terms that we're going to use. So number one, again, this is probably redundant for a lot of people on the line, but I just want to clarify some of these points for the people that may not understand it entirely because there is misinformation through different companies that offer these solutions. And I could provide examples of that, but uh, give me a call and we can walk through that together. Uh, the first is direct connectivity. Direct connectivity, direct is pretty self-explanatory. The device you have in your hand, the mobile device, you're logging into SAP with a username and password. There's no middleware, there's no cloud solution, there's no service in the middle. We are logging in just like we would on a fixed workstation PC on SAP GUI. We're just doing it on a device that's been specifically mobilized and optimized for that mobile device. No additional server, and typically it's native SAP in an ABAP language. So then there's real-time connectivity. You might say, Nick, that uh, real-time direct, aren't they the same? They're not. Real-time connectivity is exactly like it sounds. It means I'm immediately performing tasks in SAP, and this is commonly associated with a stateful, which I'm gonna define later, application. And I have a picture on the right, and this is from a video that we have uh, on our website, as well as our YouTube channel but somebody scanned the wrong barcode. So here's the user interface that you get. Because we're logged into SAP, we scan it, and it says, in this case, it's a not a valid material for a plant. It's instant, immediate validation and feedback because we're real-time connected. We don't have to worry about maintaining databases of information to synchronize with some middleware or third-party server. We're in SAP. So real-time connectivity is extremely valuable and extremely important. Um, it's actual SAP transactions, there's live user interaction, immediate validation, it's native SAP, it's session holding, and it maintains that status information. I'm logged in as an SAP user with my ID and password. I have roles and permissions. I'm going to get that information from SAP immediately when I'm performing that task so I don't make an error later. I don't want to batch it, capture it, and then have to reconcile it later because that over up opens an opportunity for an error if I'm picking or if I'm receiving and I don't know that I had a validation of putting it away or picking it for an order correctly, if I assume that's correctly based on old information, well then I have to reconcile and fix that later and that's just much more cleanup and headache. So real time is obviously the best way to go. But there's direct, there's real time, and then there's near time. So I want to clarify what this is. So near time is oftentimes evangelized as real time connectivity but it's not. It's a box that sits in the middle. So there's some type of software tool set or utility where your device is connected to your wireless network and it's communicating to a virtual machine, a machine that's on-prem, it's in the cloud, and then that is interfacing and reconciling with the SAP system. It's close to real time depending on how fast it is. There's all kinds of sniffers to make sure that that performance is awesome but it's not real time, it's close to real time. Again, we're expanding that, that, uh, that difference between real time and what can potentially happen. So there's additional software layers, there's additional servers, it's not at native SAP in most environments, and um, there's additional licensing and costs that go along with that. I'm gonna talk more about that in the future when I get to the, I'm gonna talk about the cost. And uh, Lisa, I'll ask you if you can help keep me on track because uh, I'm probably a, a fourth, of, a quarter of the way and almost halfway through time. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So the next thing I want to talk about is primary real time with offline capability, what we call store and forward. So this is a real time system, as I was saying before, with offline capability. And you can see this really fancy handheld device with transactions that we have in our library that are pre-configured and have been implemented with customers that love it. You can see this is a solution. You see a red bar with an icon, and we'll get into that and what that means, the user experience in just a minute. But this is a system that's designed to be real time. But we know there's gonna be consistent droppages. 
So we want that user to be able to capture that information, synchronize it with the database, and continue to work, and then reconnect, and then the system updates, and there may be some user interaction. But we want it to be seamless. Uh, and I'm going to provide some examples of when this would be used, but I want to define the term for you first. So real time with offline capability, this is what we call spill and forward. Directed, directly connected to the system, you're still using your SAP login, password, and ID. It's an SAP add-on, there's no additional server, so it is still direct to the system. So here's an example of what this means, a more appropriate description of this. And it's got a little bit more uh, uh, meat on the bone, as John likes to say, and it's got a little bit more of a visual understanding. So you can see in the top, our online connection real time. This is our normal status, working in a warehouse, good connectivity, I have no issue. So my application, in this case, my UI5 application, our store and forward Neptune-based solution, is interfacing with SAP Direct, and it's continuous. On time, I'm connected, bam, 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 just like it's a real-time only system. However, there's simultaneously a localized database that's been designed for the transactions we're performing that is on that device that is also synchronizing. And what happens is I lose my connection. And remember, everyone, we're talking about a connection both to the wireless network and to SAP. I don't mean just I drop Wi-Fi. I mean SAP could go down. So there are a lot of different variables. So when you hear a near-time system or a software as a service-based system or a middleware product that says they have offline capability, ask the question, what does offline mean? And get a definition as to what that means. We are talking about wireless or SAP disconnectivity. So in that case, the user is going to continue operating with that device just as they were before. There's going to be some interactions defined upon what you want. We're going to tell them, hey, you're offline, uh, keep on going, but know that you're offline and you're not going to be able to post data. Uh, we're going to seamlessly transition to our database and keep on performing those tasks. And then what happens is once we reestablish that connection via Cradle, via automatically through the wireless system, through a manual trigger, whichever is your, your preference for your application, then the database is going to synchronize. There may be some user interaction if there's some differences because other people are performing tasks. And then we are reconnected back to the system to do real-time transactional functionality. So this is what this looks like. And here's what you would see from a, from a user experience perspective. User experience is very, very important because user adoption and making sure that they pick up the device, it works, and they don't put it down and go back to a PC, a SAP GUI system. That's what we want to make sure that does not happen because a lot of companies spend a lot of money on making these systems work and putting them in place. So in this case, it's very simple. There's an indication that pops up that's a user prompt that says you are now offline. Uh, additionally, in addition to the, uh, to the green bar, which means green is good, online, you see a red bar, and then you see an icon with a wireless drop, and then it transitions back and forth when you come back to the system. So that's just a perspective of what that store and forward looks like to the user when they're interacting with the device. So now I'll talk about a slightly different look, but again, just customized for the clients because the UI5 applications are low-code development and they're rapid apps, so they can be made to look exactly how you want them to look. In this case, this is not a real-time direct connect system as a primary with offline. This is the reverse. This is, we want a offline solution, and I'll provide examples of that in a couple of minutes, an offline primary solution. We're performing our, our tasks directly on the device, we're synchronizing to the database on that device, we're caching the data, and then we're updating information to SAP. So why it's direct is because of the platform that we use, utilizing Neptune, is it's syncing, in this case, this customer specifically used a cradle. So we cradle the device, their cradle is automatically updating just as if it was connected in real time, and as soon as they disconnect it from the cradle, they go out and perform their tasks, they can't use Wi-Fi or wireless, there's security, there's hazardous locations, et cetera. But they perform their task and they bring it back and they cradle it. And then it's synchronized. Again, it can be manual or automatic back to the SAP system, but it's still direct. The only difference is, is there's a database that resides on the device. It's localized on the device itself. And in this case, the users are doing specific tasks, so there can't be conflicts. Two people cannot do two tasks because it's set up with specific roles, 
specific procedures, and specific permissions for those users. So it's a very sophisticated batch solution, but still directly connected and synchronized with SAP, which is very, very awesome, actually. So I'm not going to dive too in-depth about what stateful and stateless means, because there's a lot smarter people than I that can actually talk about this. But I wanted to have a couple of bullets to clarify for people that may or may not know. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to read it a little bit. I apologize. I'll go fast. But stateful, most simply, is an SAP session holding environment, meaning I'm live, I'm connected to SAP, and I'm maintaining that connection to SAP. So it's performed in a single context as they describe it for SAP. And it's advisable or it's best to use this where the data, the activities, or the statuses need to be maintained for a duration. When we do a picking or we do a put away, a lot of times what we're doing is we're performing a combination of SAP transactions. So we want to hold that data while we do those multiple tasks, maybe inquiring or validating and seeing where other materials are, or maybe we're picking multiple orders simultaneously, but we want to hold that data until we post it into SAP. That's a great example of why I'd want a stateful or a session holding application. On the reverse, well, let me actually let me say a very important piece about that. So again, being the pro and con or the um, uh, protagonist and antagonist. So the stateful application does place an additional strain on the SAP system because we have multiple users maintaining multiple sessions, so multiple bandwidths being pulled in all different directions. So it does have a little bit of wear and can cause slower speeds based upon how the system is designed. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes examples of a poor system and a good system, just to, to clarify that point. So stateless is the client and server, meaning the device you have in your hand and the SAP system itself, are unaware of the other's status. The only time that information is being updated is when that call is generated, is when it's made and then the data is being exchanged. It's more suitable for apps, and I say apps, because I'm talking about UI5 client applications that don't require that constant status and it avoids the SAP system resources. A lot of times this can be done uh, and seem to the user to be much faster. Also in this scenario, stateless is beneficial because if I have a wireless blip, like I drop or I jump from one AP, AP to the next and it maybe lasts a few seconds or maybe lasts a minute or two, Again, I don't want to dive into the details. I'll, I'll provide technical uh, specification on that if you'd like. But what happens is if I'm stateless and I lose my connection and then I reconnect, unlike stateful, I don't lose my connectivity to SAP because I haven't called for data. I'm not requesting or sending data. So that only happens when I do go to make that request or perform that transaction. So also, uh, one additional point is that uh, Stateless, via the Neptune solution, unlike Fiori, has additional capability for lock handling, which is something that's very important to a lot of our users. So, a lot of definitions, but try to go quickly for you. So, now I want to show you a couple of examples. And I like to, we, we had at the beginning the side-by-side -side comparisons, but I want to show you a visual on the screen while we talk about the points. And John mentioned it before, we're going to start with console. console we're starting from the latest to the greatest. That's the sequence we're going here. So console connectivity, green screen. It's not always green screen. Sometimes it's uh, white. Sometimes it's red on black. Uh, but it's commonly known as green screen. So real-time SAP, very fast, character-based data transmission. Works for SAP. Works for older versions, I believe, all the way back to like R3 version 4.6. So all the way up to S4 HANA. We've implemented this on some of the latest versions of SAP S4 HANA. Still valid, no end of life, no official documentation from SAP on them discontinuing this, but it's actually something of more of a standalone product set. But still supported, still works well, still very fast. Um, it's a stable connection, standard locking. It does require a Telnet server and a Telnet client per device. Uh, the appearance is not always great. Uh, even though it is characters and it's good resolution or contrast, you can't use the touch screen. Now, I, can't, I say you can't use it. If somebody's designed your transactions in console, so you have to scroll left and scroll right, which is not ideal, you can use your device, if it has touch screen capability, to scroll because you'll have scroll bars. 
but you can't interact with the field specifically. That's what I'm talking about. Additionally, there are emulators like uh, AllTouch All and other products like that that actually can take your Telnet session and convert it to utilize the touchscreen functionality for the fields of your data, just like using your keypad. It's pretty nice scripting. But let me just put a caveat out there. It's emulation. Anybody that knows emulation knows that it's not always 100%. It requires customization. It's an additional layer, and it may not be right for your application. It may be better to look at the next version I'm going to talk about, which is ITS Mobile, and I'll tell you why more in a minute. But it's important to know it's mature, but it's still available, it's still fast, and it's still applicable, and there's support for Windows and Android operating systems. Here's the architecture of what that actually looks like. So it's direct, and it's, uh, I'll say real time, I guess you could debate me on this, but because it's a session persistence capability, I would call it real time because it's holding that stateful connection to SAP. So it's going through an additional server, but because it actually has that Telnet server that sits on the device, but it has actual uh, Telnet session on the device itself. So this is the architecture of what that looks like. And again, a lot of devices that connect back to the SAP system. So the next is ITS Mobile. So ITS Mobile, as you can see on the screen, it's not only for touchscreen devices. I just wanted to compare and contrast an old MC92 and O versus a newer TC7 series device. It's only touchscreen capability. So like console, it's real-time direct connect to SAP, no offline capability because it's stateful. It's supported ECC6 all the way up to, we're implementing it today for S4 HANA applications. As of NetWeaver uh, 2004, S7.0, 7.1 and higher, it's supported. So it may go back beyond ECC6 and some of the initial enhancement packs. It uses ITS for connectivity. It's stateful, standard lock, uh, locking of objects. It uses a web browser. It's HTML screen, so it looks a little bit better. You can use touchscreen functionality. You can use physical keys, but it too is considered a, a mature SAP technology. That's perception, but in some people's eyes, it is considered SAP screens. It's not UI5, so it's considered mature. But it also supports some important things, RFID and voice. If that's something that's important to you because you have a system in place, you may want to give that some thought because it does support those systems for advanced data collection. And here's what that architecture looks like. You can see that my, my additional server in the middle has gone away. It's direct from the device with a properly staged device with a web browser right to the SAP, SAP system through the wireless infrastructure. Again, we can review this and we have information and data sheets on our website that actually talk about this data more in depth if you'd like to spend more time looking at it. So the next is UI5 connectivity. Now I lumped Fiori and Neptune UI5 tool sets together, but it can be broken apart later and I will talk about the differences a little bit more. But I want to talk about some of the important parts. The look and feel is very different. Um, I, I compare it for a lot of people like this. If you, go, if you want to go to Amazon to buy something and you're going to use your tablet or your phone, you could use your web browser to log into Amazon and do it through the web browser. And it's a good user experience. It works great. You accomplish the exact same tasks and it's very fast. Or you could download the app on your phone and then use the dedicated UI5 app to actually log in and do the calls and tie into the uh, web browser to make the calls back to the servers, et cetera. Those are the two differences. This is that application-based methodology. That might be a bad description. There might be some people on it that know more, more than I do, so I apologize if, if you could describe that better, but that's just one that I like. Um, it's direct. It's fast. The support for offline capability and batch data collection. It's for SAP EC6 and S4 HANA. And between Fiori and uh, Neptune, there's differences in the NetWeaver minimum requirements. There's some, some significant differences between the two, which I'll talk about more in a few minutes. It's SAP certified, SAP add-on connectivity, so it's the most low-code native solution that you can have. Touchscreen physical keys, uh, the Fiori design, is similar in nature to what the architectural layouts are for Fiori and what SAP has architected for people. The one thing I want to mention about that, though, is that when you're thinking about a design of an SAP application for UI5, what you don't want to do is have to jump around on your device, meaning scrolling up, scrolling down to get to the field that you need. We follow inventory control best practices where it's 
one field at a time, and when you complete that field, you validate that information, you move to the next field. And it's always in the position that the user can see in front of their face, regardless of a keyboard. That's one important difference between how we do things and other people. Um, one big point about this approach to UI5 is that it's screen responsive. And I had two devices here that you can't see them real clearly. I've got a MC3300 RF scanner, traditional gun, and a handheld. You can see they have the exact same formatting, but they expand to the size of the screen. That's the difference between console and that's the difference between ITS and mobile. Those are 16 by 20 formats or 8 by 40 for vehicle terminals and they're fixed. This is a responsive screen design. So that is a difference. Uh, it too is built on uh, ABAP but also uses JSON, OData, and JavaScript. It requires additional expertise for the solution to work for your environment. And it offers online and offline capability, meaning stateful and stateless. So there's all kinds of checkboxes and architectures that you can build into your system based upon what you need to do and getting maximum speed. And because it's UI5, it supports additional devices, iOS devices, Windows 10 devices, and it's excellent for authentication and for single sign-on capabilities. We've done this a lot uh, in, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months. If you want to move away from the user ID and PIN every time you log in and you want to do a four-digit PIN that uses single sign-on, this is a great tool set for that. Um, and here's what that architecture looks like. Again, like ITS Mobile, it's direct from the device through the wireless, direct to SAP, because the, the solution is built on the, on the SAP box. The difference is you'll see a couple of purple things. There's an API that sits on the device instead of a web browser. There's a web browser too, but the API is the key launch tool. And then there's the database itself that resides in the device. And this is going to be based upon how much transactional data you need to store, how many transactions you're doing, which ones have that offline requirement. So that's, it. that's an example. Here's another example. And again, this is not an apples to apples comparison, so I'll put that caveat out there. So on the right, you see the Fiori architecture and how it lays out. On the left, you'll see the Neptune tool set and our platform for the UI5 using Neptune. Again, we do both, Neptune and Fiori, but the one on the left shows the Neptune tool. So the one on the left seems a lot less complicated, and in some cases it is. However, inside of that NetWeaver box on the left is a lot of the things that you'll see that are broken out in the gray boxes on the right for Fiori. So it's very similar, but there's some key intricate details that make up the differences. But I wanted to show you what those architectures look like from the platform standpoint. And again, we could talk about that more in depth if you had some interest. So if you're really hard, uh, you can't see very well, this is going to be a bit difficult slide, but I, I really had a hard time blowing it up. I did not highlight all the aspects of these different solutions. I just pinpointed a few, not to be uh, delivering a specific message, just stuff that's important to our users and what they ask. So here's some of the stuff, comparing ITS Mobile, Console, UI5, which is the store and forward using Neptune, the primary online, and then the primary offline, as well as using Fiori. So you'll see checkboxes for you know, SAP across the borough board, SAP certified, direct connectivity, obviously the batches that have direct connectivity. I'll skip down to real-time validation. Well, I lose that real-time validation when I'm offline, so obviously an offline solution isn't going to work, or if a solution is primarily online, and if it's offline, my validation is only as good as the data that I have. Uh, I'll skip down a little further, SAP integrated barcode printing. Most of these solutions can provide printing. Actually, all of them can provide printing. The difference is online printing is how you get SAP integrated printing. If I want printing that's offline, I'm going to have to do some type of Bluetooth or Tether connection to my printer, be it a mobile printer or a tabletop. So that's a, that's a key intricate detail there. Uh, the support for devices, you're going to see some asterisks for the devices when I talk about the different systems. The higher you go up in your capability and your solution with UI5, the less options you currently have available because of processor requirements, memory requirements from a RAM and flash standpoint, as well as for data caching, as well as the operating system versions and flavors, because we all know that Android and iOS, they change on a pretty regular basis, like six months, uh, for rugged devices, it might be longer, 12 months, 18 months, et cetera. Um, then you'll see locking, stateful, stateless. You'll start to see what real-time can and can't do, offline capability, what it can't do. 
what's native SAP source code. That's an important line item. Uh, UI5 capabilities, screen rendering, and then rapid app development. Obviously, when you start to get to um, uh, UI5 applications using Neptune or Fiori, now we can start, start developing applications beyond warehouse management. We can start doing it for HR, for sales, for accounting, et cetera. You don't have that necessarily, or you wouldn't want to use that with console and ICS mobile. So these are a few of the highlights. Now let's talk about some of the specific considerations. And I'm getting pretty close to the end of the presentation, so if there's some questions popping up, we can address those. Um, let's talk about costs. So costs from a console perspective, it's native SAP. Remember that. Once you build it, it's your source code. It's in place. There's no ongoing software. It's only maintaining the ABAP code that you have. But the additional cost for the system, you've got to have a Telnet server, which means a physical server and a Telnet license. And then you have to have the mobile device Telnet license. Typically, it's a, clo a closed loop system. This is actually really interesting because a lot of customers, as I've heard through some of the ASIG meetings, because SAP has pushed out um, support for ECC, I believe, to, from 2025 to 2030, some people are talking about this expression called fencing. And in a console environment, fencing might be something that's applicable because it's a closed system in some scenarios. So I just want to emphasize the cost consideration, which is the telnet is really the biggest piece. ICS Mobile, same scenario. It's native SAP source code. Once the transactions are put in place for mobility, they're yours. They are now with your SAP system. There's no ongoing software or maintenance. There's no ongoing licensing. You just have to maintain it. You have to make changes to it, maybe add functionality to it, and that might have some cost and time, or if you have somebody like us, provide some assistance. But once it's in place, it's in place. The additional cost is that mobile uh, industrial web browser that sits on that device. And you typically want to have maintenance on that device so that way as your operating systems change, your license can flow with it just for good support. But it's a small piece. Both of those are very small licensing costs for ongoing costs or total cost of ownership is what I was trying to say. Now when we get to UI5, and that includes Neptune and Fiori, this isn't everything. Know that. So let me just put that asterisk out there. This is just the highlight. So the highlights for the software considerations are both, well, both are on the SAP system. The Neptune solution is, has Neptune software tool set. So there is perpetual uh, software runtime license that sits on the box, the SAP system, and then there's user licensing that sits on the device itself that allows us to have that UI5 application. There's, ongoing, there's cost for that initially, and then there's ongoing maintenance costs that you have to maintain. That's an important piece to consider. The next is Fiori. So Fiori, I've heard many, many times saying, well, it's free. It's like ITS Mobile. You just develop the applications, put it in place, and it's ready to rock, and it's good. Not true. I've had customers give me specific feedback that says that if you want to develop mobile platforms, there's additional licensed software that you have to have in order to do that. And in this case, I've identified two of those pieces, the mobile platform server, that allows for authentication, SSO, and offline enablement, and then the web IDE, which is for development testing, more sophisticated testing and development, and role-based apps for mobile and hybrid applications specifically. And I believe this may also, and I apologize if I'm misstating, but this may also have something to do with database integration and a more sophisticated material master data reconciliation. It may be a different tool, but I think the IDE might have something to do with that as well. Again. If we want to talk about that and you want to understand that better, let me bring in my technical team that knows Fiori very well, and let's have a conversation. But these are some of the cost considerations that you need to keep in mind. Everybody likes to talk about speed. How fast is it? How slow is it? So I put up a couple of meters to give you an indication of how these things work. Now, this can be a little bit deceiving because it is entirely based on how your implementation partner, whether you did it internally, your own group is your partner, you did it through a partner like ourselves, or you did it through a different partner. How the system is analyzed, designed, and implemented is going to play into this very heavily. Not all systems are created equal. We know that through, through experience, most of the people on the phone. So console's fast. It's character-based. It's telnet. It's just sending streams of data extremely quickly. So it is top speed. It, so that's one of the biggest reasons that people want to keep it when they have it is because of how fast it is. 
as well as being native and, uh, and low cost of ownership. ITS Mobile is also very fast. This is a little less fast, only from the perspective of when we build our software functionality for our customers, a lot of times we will daisy chain and combine transactions together, which means we're holding session persistence to gather more data and then send it. So that can sometimes slow down the speed. But when measured from the user's perspective, there's hardly any notice between the two. And if it's apples to apples, just one transaction at a time, it's going to be very, very similar. We're not sending all the data and receiving all the data refresh screens. We're sending bits and pieces. So from the Neptune perspective, it can be designed to be fast or very fast. So fast, again, is based upon the design, but when we're actually performing that state for stateless application, it's only receiving key pieces of data. So if I'm doing stateless, I'm only sending and receiving when I need it, which means it's gonna go real fast because there's less strain on the actual system. Additionally, if I go offline, it is blazing fast because I'm only, I'm only performing transactions on the device. I'm not actually going back to any type of system to validate because I'm using my local database. So to the user, we've heard from our users saying, well, when I'm offline, it's so much faster than when it's online. Yeah, because you're not synchronizing with anything besides the actual local database. So for Fiori, this is where it starts to drop. Um, and this is an honest opinion I've gotten from end users specifically is that there's additional layering and there's architecture specifically in how it's built. Maybe this will change, maybe it's starting to change already, but typically when it actually renders the pages for you, so when you go from transaction screen to screen, you're getting full screen information. I'm sending full data and receiving full data, not pieces, not only what I need, I'm sending everything, so I'm reloading the whole page. And this can take time. It's based on, on your processor, your wireless connectivity, how many people are doing it, so you can see potentially okay to negative speeds. And this is not good in a warehouse environment because you want the bottleneck to be how fast the operator can perform the transaction, not how fast your software is going to run. If your software is now the bottleneck, that's an issue. So it's an important consideration. So here's some different scenario examples of why you would stay with, move to, or consider one of these different applications or these different architectures. Console, speed, cost. You've got a lot of older devices that are still supported. That's a very important piece. You've got a legacy SAP system, um, or you just want rapid implementation. I just want the lowest cost for the fastest implementation to go from pen and paper to an RF scanning system. And I can use all these devices that I've got in my desk that are collecting dust that are still supported. Great, console will work excellent. ITS Mobile, very, very similar in that nature. I can use uh, legacy technology. I can use modern technology. It's got direct architecture. It's very simple. It's fast to implement. I can use things like touchscreen. It looks better. I can use voice interaction. I have existing pre-configured transactions, which means my time for implementation is going to be a lot faster. So I can start with my pilot, might be able to include all the functionality I need versus just focusing on three or five Specific, specific things. Now, when we talk about UI5, we need to make sure that we understand why. Why do you need a UI5 based application when you've got other options available to you? There might be specific requirements. So some of those specific requirements are, I need that offline capability. I need to be primarily offline. I have a 3PL, uh, in this case, I got government, hazardous locations. We've got a couple customers last year we delivered it for. They've got sites that don't have wireless. They have to go do counting at a facility that doesn't have wireless. They know they need it for that. I know I can't use my device uh, through wireless network because of security reasons for the government. Those are a couple examples. If I needed extended app development beyond the WMS system, I have bought this tool set of Neptune for accounting, for sales and distribution, for front-end operations. Well, let's use it for the back-end operations, for the warehouse operations. Great, that's a great opportunity to do that. If I've got a large staff in place that are experts with ABAP and JavaScript and they're building all these tools that are low-code solutions, then UI5 might be a good fit for your application. But those are a few scenarios. So some of the, again, we already touched on this, but I just wanted to highlight it, uh, you know, console. Um, and again, we can get more details specific what SAP has and what we know from implementations. But console and ITS mobile are supported pretty far back. 
So most of our current uh, folks on the line are using ECC or S4 HANA, so it's going to support most of these solutions. But we really start to get some differences when we start to talk about UI5. We need NetWeaver version 7.0, we need NetWeaver 7.5 for the systems to work. And then migration. John, would you like to talk about migrating from, uh, from you know, console to ITS mobile? Give us a quick two seconds on that. And what you think about? That's fine. No, I, I appreciate that. That's, that's one of the, again, an, another very, very hot, hot question and opportunity. We've got lots of, lots of clients um, that have barcode scanning, data collection, integrated barcode printing systems today. So to move from console to ITS mobile is a very simple, easy uh, fix or move or migration, whatever you want to call it. The ABAP programs uh, do not change. Uh, they are the same ABAP programs via console or via ITS mobile as we talk about ECC, as we talk about um, ERP. Once we get to uh, S4 HANA, um, we still run console transactions and ITS mobile transactions into uh, uh, S4 HANA. There is a very small amount of manipulation that needs to be done. Um, but again, a very, very small amount. The difference between going to console and ITS mobile is that we, we re-engineer the screens. The ABA programs are the same. The screens are now using um, a web browser uh, look and touch. We can actually use the touch screens now, where in console we couldn't. Yeah, exactly. And then for everybody's benefit, uh, if somebody says, well, I've got console and I want to go to a UI5, I want to go to a Fiori application, I want on and offline store and forward capability, just know that it's a rewrite. The migration path is not there. We have to redesign the system because the system is different. How it's architect is different, how the flow is going to work is different, the offline capabilities, the difference between stateful and stateless are different. There's a lot of different components plus the utilization of different technologies for coding specifically, like JavaScript. So um, again, we're running a little short on time, so I'm going to skip through the last couple of things quickly. So one of the things that need to also be considered are the device minimum system requirements. So if devices are important to your application, here's a quick look at that. So console, Windows CE, Windows Mobile, and Android, a lot of them have Telnet client device licenses. Depending on the device you get, higher end devices have them pre-licensed, Lower end devices have them preloaded. ITS mobile, you need to get an industrial web browser, but still CE, mobile, Android devices works great. And the system minimal requirements for CPUs and memories are low standard, so you can get baseline models to perform these transactions. For UI5 and Fiori, that changes significantly. We need minimum CPU requirements. Uh, and these are the minimums, and these actually vary based upon your application. So this is going to be the baseline starting point. So we're going to need minimum systems of Android, iOS, and Windows. We're going to need minimum uh, memory for the RAM. We're going to need minimum processors. We're going to need minimum levels of uh, flash. And that's going to be dependent upon how much offline or caching we're doing with the data. But it changes because a lot of the legacy devices will not work. And, uh, okay, uh, let's see. So uh, importance of blueprinting, uh, blueprinting, uh, again, I can talk about this. Again, I, I talked about this at the beginning. Is designing the system is extremely important for um, uh, for making sure that the system is built and architected in a way that is ideal to your application. Making sure that the ROI is there. Looking into the functional environment, technical requirement, the physical environment. And here's a couple of examples of, uh, of bad designs implementation. So on the right is that what I was talking about. We have to scroll up and down to jump in a different field. Yeah, it looks nice because it's a UI5 application, but you have to actually scroll, go to a field, enter it, scroll back up to the top, enter some data there, and if you don't, it doesn't jump around automatically. What I wanted to show you on the left is a bad example of an implementation. Um, and let me just do this real quick because everybody likes to see examples. So I'm going to do a, uh, a bad example here. So here's wrong. So if you have to do this with your ITS mobile, uh, you need to fire somebody because that was not done correctly. It should fit on your screen entirely. If you're having to scroll, that's bad. So that is a what not to do scenario. Real quick, it was the validation, the bad examples. No, we'll jump to questions. So yeah, so kind of ending on a, not trying to end on a negative note, just showing you as a, as a little bit of a, a moment of, of humor of what it should not do and should not look like. So with that said, 
Lisa, are there any questions that we can address real quick, the last minute or so? So, Nick, if it's okay with you, we have about seven questions. So, oh. I was thinking it might be good to send those answers out with a link to the presentation. Okay. So that because I know we're we have about thirty seconds. Okay. So, does yeah. that work for you? That works for me. Yeah. But thank you, everyone, for your time. I apologize for speeding and not answering the questions right away. We will get to those. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Thanks, Th everybody. Have a great day.